Hey everyone, welcome to the first uh, installment of Tyranid Tactica. On this video here, we're going to review the Tyranid 5th edition codex. Uh, being that the 6th edition is about to drop this coming weekend, I figured I'd go through the old codex and uh, do a quick review of everything that we have as of right now, and uh, just that uh, way we can figure out what's going to be good, what's changed, and uh, maybe what's stayed uh, between the two codexes. So starting off, we're going to take a look at the codex on a whole. So some of the strengths that Codex um, has currently is um, definitely our psychers uh, in terms of Biomancy. Being um, with 6th edition coming out and the option to roll on the Biomancy table um, gave our Codex a huge boost. Um, it's great, um, especially with powers like Iron Arm, it makes our Flyrants, um, Turbigons, and any other creatures we have, even with Endurance, extremely powerful and durable and uh, lets us fulfill a lot more rolls. Um, the one downside to Biomancy is it is random rolling on it. But I mean, being that Turbigons can have up to three powers, you do have a good chance of getting a power that you do need. It moves on to our next strength, which is Turbigons himself. Um, they're honestly the glue that holds our codex together as of now. Um, it's definitely a strong point, but it also is flows over into one of our weaknesses, which I'll talk about shortly. Um, we also, too, have a lot of strong monstrous creatures on a whole. Um, we definitely have um, key players in the flyer, and a Turbigon again. Um, Carnifex is a little lackluster this version, but we'll talk about that once we get to the heavy support. Um, our weakness is definitely that we are, is due to that we're a very mono build codex as of right now. Um, it's really only a couple viable builds out there with our codex. Um, one with well, the primary one basically being Turbigon supported by Flyrance, um, which goes over to um, one of our other weaknesses is that we are uh, extremely lacking anti air. Uh, when it comes to dealing with flyers. Our really only true option is our flyer, which um, is it's a bit of an expensive unit to use as your primary anti-air, being the fact that it's it's a pretty high point cost, but uh, we'll talk with the flyer once we uh, get to the HQ section. And also, um, internal balance is another one with the codex on a whole, um, being that it's mono build, there's not a lot of variety in there. I mean, they're definitely in your fluffy games, there's a lot of uh, games you can use uh, the majority of the codex, but on a whole in the competitive environment, you won't see too many um, warriors or gene stealers. And one other issue too with our codex in addition to that is, well, we are fairly slow in comparison to a lot of the other codexes that have dropped. I mean, it, it's not a big issue, but we do have to slug it across. We do have the spores, but that option isn't available to a lot of our codex, but on a whole, this isn't really too bad, but being that we're an assault oriented army, you'd think it'd be a bit quicker, but. We're st it's still solid either way, it's not that bad of a weakness, but it is one that we do have to take in consideration when list building. So anyway, um, that's uh, our codex on a whole. Um, so now we're going to take a look at uh, Tyranid HQ. So starting this off, we're going to go, of course, with the Hive Tyrant, one of the most iconic uh, units in the Tyranid Codex. Now the Hive Tyrant, um, in this codex, uh, some of his strengths, he's, he's definitely very versatile on the table, um, he's, and he's also very quick when equipped with wings. One of the other huge advantages with the Tyrant is um, the psychic power availability, being that he can take um, two powers, although he is mastery level one, which is a little bit of a downside, but I mean, we do get two rolls on two um, Biomancy, so if we do get Iron Arm, say for example, it definitely makes the Flyer an extremely tough opponent to deal with. Now, uh, the weaknesses are the big thing about the Flyer. He's, he's an excellent unit, don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to downplay the Flyer at all, but there are a few weaknesses when using the Flyer. Primarily the big one is that he's high cost, uh, which I don't disagree that his cost is incorrect, it's the fact that um, he's high cost in, in regards to being that he's our only reliable anti-air unit, which is a bit rough, um, especially when playing against other Flyers, it's hard to take them down. Um, and there, there are very few builds that you can actually have that are effective with the flyer right now. Or you hear me saying flyer, that, because that's probably the only um, version you see of the tyrant these days. Although there, there's a few um, shell rants out there with uh, the two plus save, which is viable. But being that it's a very shooty addition, uh, the flying high tyrant definitely is the way to go. And also having only four wounds can be a bit of a downside, especially when you can get grounded, where that's almost a guaranteed wound. But I mean. You, you don't know what's going to happen, so it's not that too much of a downside, realistically, but overall the Hive Tyrant definitely probably the best unit in our Codex, or one of. Um, it's very versatile on the table and is a, definitely a threat and can fill all kinds of roles, can be assaulting, um, is shooty definitely when equipped with the Twin Lake Brain Devourers. Uh, I know that's a complete nightmare for uh, your opponent, but overall the Flyer definitely is one of our best choices. And moving on now, we have the 
Turbigon. This here by, is by far the best unit in our codex. Um, definitely, in my opinion now, I can see a bit of a nerf coming for this uh, unit in our next codex, but I guess we'll have to wait till Saturday to see. But um, taking a look at some of the strengths, I mean, the first one that obviously stands out is the ability to spawn gaunts. Uh, and these gaunts that come out are troop choices as well. So you have um, already a uh, unit that can be a troop choice, and now the Turbigon can be a troop choice by bringing one unit up Termagons, it uh, doesn't matter what size, which unlocks it. one Turbigon as a troops choice. So we already have a troops choice monstrous creature spawning more troops choices, and being that it is a primarily objective based game, uh, this makes the Turbigon definitely a hard hitter. Uh, next one is uh, the Psychic Powers, which kind of falls over to the buffing rolls it has listed there in the strength, but um, being that it can take up to three powers, it's three rolls in Biomancy, so it definitely makes the Turbigon extremely versatile. Uh, being that you can get iron armor, endurance, and just uh, toss up, feel no pain, or keep it very durable moving up the table. And especially too with buffing rolls, being that it can pass, um, if you take an upgrade, uh, toxin sacks or adrenal glands, it can pass those upgrades over to your gaunts as long as they're within six inches. So it definitely makes a Turbion um, an extremely heavy hitting unit. Um, the one weakness with it, and it's honestly not that big of a weakness, being that you can uh, bubble wrap it with ter um, termagants and keep it well protected. Yeah. It is a bit slow on its own, but being that uh, all the strengths that it has there, they definitely a way that's slow, but uh, overall the Turbigon is definitely the heavy hitter and uh, the centerpiece to most Tyranid armies in 5th edition. So as I mentioned earlier, I, I definitely think we'll see this change in 6th edition, but we'll have to wait and see. But Definitely the Turbigon has been a great unit for me, and it's won me many a game, so uh, definitely one of the best in the 5th edition codex. So now we have the Tyranid Prime. Uh, in my experience playing uh, with the 5th edition Tyranid Codex, uh, I definitely found that Tyranid Prime has his uses. Um, I can see why he wouldn't be used too often, being he's in competition with the Turbigons and the Flying Hive Tyrant, or just the Tyrant on the ground if that's what you prefer. But overall, the Tyranid Prime, the only real use I've used him for is um, being that I would make him my Warlord and kind of use him as a backfield synapse role or uh, in a Death Star role with the uh, Swarm Lord. Now, there isn't really a solid build with the Tyranid Prime. Uh, his cost is pretty good. I mean, he's only uh, 90 points, I believe it is, uh, something like that, so it's not too bad. But it allows you to be a bit more um, flexible with your Flyer, not worried about giving away that Warlord um, kill right off the bat, sending him up. Uh, deal some damage first uh, turn. And also too, he comes with a pretty cheap uh, regen, definitely. I think it's the cheapest of the Codex, if I remember correctly. So it, it's pretty nice and helps. it definitely helps keep him alive. There has it been a few times where it actually has saved me. It's definitely worth getting, and if you do actually play with Warriors, he actually does buff your Warriors up to Blitz Skill 4. So it is worth taking him if you play Warrior Heavy. I know it's not too commonly seen. His weaknesses is there's not too much variety with him. It's pretty much um, take a bone sword lash whip uh, with him and kind of either stick him with some warriors, have him in the backfield, or send him up with a nice bubble wrap of gaunts. He also is an independent character which is nice. Um, and also one of his weaknesses is he can be a little slow getting up the table. Um, and it also makes him a prime target to get shot by that strength 10 which can ID him. But overall the prime isn't bad but when compared to the turbulence and the tyrant uh, it's kind of a tough argument to pull the prime out unless you just want that cheap warlord or if you just don't have the points to say to fit in another turbigon or tyrant at least. And now time for probably my favorite HQ choice in the 5th edition Tyranid Codex, the Swarm Lord. This guy is probably the best close combat unit in the game by far. In a one-on-one, -on -one, um, you'd be tough pressed to find anyone that can beat him. So let's take a look at his strengths. Um, as I said, he's the king of close combat. All of his attacks are instant death, and it being that monstrous creatures are now AP2 all of the time, um, he, he's pretty much taking out most opponents that he comes into. And he's a character, so he can challenge and defend himself well, especially when accompanied by a tyrant guard. And the psychic powers is another huge um, bonus, too, with the Swarm Lord. Uh, he can, is mastery level 2 and has 4 powers, so you definitely have a good chance if you choose to roll on Biomancy to get Iron Arm or uh, even Endurance or Warp Speed, especially Warp Speed and Iron Iron, this makes this guy an absolute monster to deal with. And uh, another one of his huge strengths is his Death Star capability. If you stick him with a Prime and a Tyrant Guard, um, you, in this game it's majority toughness, remember, so if you do get Iron Arm, you can have a 
Geordie toughness of nine um, prime Swarmlord and guard unit just wandering up the table. Definitely hard to deal with, but it does come with its weaknesses, which is um, its speed, as I'll get to in just a moment. So one of the other huge, um, or one of the hugest weaknesses with the Swarmlord is he's very vulnerable to shooting. Uh, he doesn't have an involved save outside of close combat, so he definitely be, can be taken down pretty easily um, if he doesn't have a guard or a uh, prime with the guard and him to protect him. And now uh, one of his other issues is speed. Uh, he easily avoidable by quicker armies such as um, Dark Elder or Eldar. Uh, definitely can get away from him pretty quick, but uh, if you do send him up the middle of the table, he's definitely going to be targeted quick. So rolling on, um, I believe it's tele um, telekinesis, I believe it's the school. You can get Gate of Infinity, but it it's risky to get. i definitely go for an Iron Arm Endurance and Warp Speed over that. And also the cost, too. Um, he's 285 points, which isn't bad, um, being that S3 level 2 and also that all his um, close combat attacks are instant death. But the fact that you need to bring guard with him for his five, so definitely with the guard combined with his point cost, it does kind of get a little high in the end. But overall, though, Swarm Lord is definitely a really heavy hitting HQ choice, and uh, you do have to build your army around uh, running Swarm Lord. His synapse range is much bigger than um, the Turbigon and Tyrant, so it does let you be a bit more flexible with your army. And also, um, Shadow on the Warp is a lot bigger too, so definitely Swarm Lord is a solid choice for HQ. While on the subject with uh, Swarm Lord, we'll take a look at the Tyrant Guard. So looking at the uh, strengths of the Tyrant Guard, they do have a 3-up save. Uh, they are toughness 5, so definitely um, very tough to take down. Uh, they do have some solid weapon options, being that you can take a Lash Whip with them, which uh, can make everyone else initiative 1 and allow the Swarm Lord to guarantee to hit first day against high um, striking opponents like Dark Elder or uh, whoever else is. Crazy initiative out there. Um, looking at the weaknesses of them, uh, it does have two wounds, which isn't a bad thing, but I mean, uh, it is only two wounds that you have to go through to get to the Swarm Lord, so that can kind of be bad if you bring only one of them. Um, so definitely recommend taking maybe two. I, I usually run one myself, but uh, being that I prefer to do that just to save the points. Again, that moves over into cost, uh, being that you got to take two of them with Swarm Lord to guarantee him up there, like absolutely for sure, so he doesn't get gunned down. It can kind of add up for a bit, but overall the Tyrant Guard definitely are a solid choice to take, and. Uh, work well in combination with the Swarm Lord. So that gives us a basic overview of all the HQ units in the 5th edition Tyranid Konex. I know I left with the Parasite, but honestly I haven't used him enough to give a solid opinion on him. Um, unfortunately I've only used him I think once or twice, so it, I don't think it'd be right to give a uh, misinformed opinion out. So now we're going to take a look at some of the Tyranid Elites. So starting off the Elites, we're going to take a look at the Beefy Hive Guard. This here is definitely um, one of the key auto-include units, personally for me, uh, in most of my tier list, being that the fact they don't require line of sight, which is their first strength I've listed there, um, so they can hide behind cover and uh, take down quite a lot of uh, vehicles or high toughness uh, models you might encounter. They also themselves have a high toughness, which makes them pretty durable, so you can set them out in the open if you need to. They can wither a lot of fire, but um, if they, they do die to high volume fire. Um, and definitely they're by far the best solid uh, light uh, tank hunter in the Tyranid army. Their uh, weapons are strength 8 so I mean easily pops most vehicles out there and uh, definitely makes them great for hunting um, light tanks like Dark Elder Venoms or um, trying to take down Wave Serpents being that they ignore cover. Um, so it, it's definitely a, um, an excellent unit to include in your Tyranid army. Uh, the weaknesses now is the 4 plus save. This is a huge downside to them but I mean if you look at what comes with it it's quite clear that um, 4 plus save is what it is, so. but uh, it, you definitely got to be careful when moving them around, uh, especially with a lot of the high AP weapons that are out there uh, with all the new codexes. It makes it pretty easy to, um, to get taken down to say like a bunch of rending shots coming from warp spiders or whatever else is out there. Uh, it depends on your own meta really. But overall the Hive Guard are definitely uh, in my opinion, the best choice in the elite slot. You definitely want to include at least one unit of them in each entry, and even two, because sometimes they can get targeted quick. But overall, I highly recommend the Hive Guard, and uh, hopefully, moving to the sixth edition codex, we won't see too much of a change. But if it happens, uh, we'll have to adapt, and it'll be one of the fun challenges of uh, learning what works in the new codex. So next up in our elite slot is the Tyranid Zone Throat. Uh, this here is uh, one of my favorite models. Um, just even. Uh, through the look of the model and also how they play on the table. So taking a look at their strengths, um, first one obviously stands out as Warplants. It's the single most powerful um, shot in the game, 
I, I'm pretty sure it is. I think it is. But anyways, it's uh, extremely powerful. It's almost guaranteed to blow up most tanks. I mean, you'll have a bit more harder of a time with a uh, land raider or whatever. But anyway, um, so moving on, the um, one of the huge strengths of zone throws too is also they uh, don't have to fill an offensive role using warp lance and warp blast. You can um, take some rolls on the biomancy if you get lucky. They can definitely fill some buffing rolls if you get lucky and get endurance or enfeeble. So definitely they can fill the backfield synapse and if you take some psychic shriek on them they're great for taking care of any deep striking troops that come in the back. Another huge strength is a 3 up invol and also too that they can be alpha striked in with the uh, mycetic spores which makes them great for dropping right in the, in the uh, opponent's deployment and uh, easily taking care of um, a tank, especially when you can get in behind uh, and shoot the rear of the armor, or even just get to the other end of the table just to get some synapse presence on the board. Uh, but overall, the strength of the zone so are great. So looking at the weaknesses, they are kind of slow, they usually do have to slug it up the board unless you put them in a mindset explore. It's not always a bad thing, but um, the range isn't the, high, like, uh, isn't the greatest, so it can um, be a bit of an issue getting them range of the lands, but overall it's not too bad. They are toughness force, so they can be ID'd fairly easily with all the strength 8 plus that's out there. And now the one huge weakness to them is honestly they're pretty unreliable with um, what they have to go through. Um, if you don't know what I mean by that, I mean psychic powers, you gotta roll for the power, then you gotta roll, to, or then there's deny the witch, and then you gotta roll to hit, then roll to wound, then for beagles, roll to see if it blows up. But I mean with Lance, there's a pretty good chance that it'll blow up. Overall, those zone tropes are definitely a solid choice. You can. Uh, fill many roles with them, they can be buffing, they can be uh, offensive, so either way, uh, definitely a lot of options for the zone throw over there. Highly recommend using them. So next up is the Yum Girl Gene Stealers. I've recently started using these uh, Gene Stealers more often. I've always um, kind of favored the Hive Guard and Zone Throat, but uh, recently discovered how great Yum Girl Gene Stealers are. So the strengths um, with them is they can assault from coming out of reserve, which I believe is the only unit in the game as of right now who can do so. And uh, they're also extremely good in close combat. They can easily take down most vehicles with their rending claws and uh, can handle most opponents as long as you bring a solid number of them. So uh, they definitely can get in the opponent's deployment, cause a lot of disruption, and allow the rest of your um, swarm to easily cross the field with uh, little or to no uh, shooting at them. So definitely great for that factor. Uh, now the weaknesses, they, they do cost a bit more than uh, your gene, normal gene stealers, obviously with their bonuses, but. Um, overall, the cost can add up, say if you take 10 of them, but in the end, it definitely is worth taking them. Uh, I think they're great. Uh, I've had extreme success with them, so I guess we'll have to wait and see if they um, carry it over to the next codex. Uh, rumor is they're not. Um, it would really suck to see um, them not in there, being that I just started using them and discovered how, just how great they are, but overall, um, they're excellent to use, and uh, we'll see if they stick around for the 6th edition codex. So now let's take a look at the dreaded Doom of Malentai. Uh, this here is probably the single most cheesy unit and also one of the most hated units in 40k. Um, Doom definitely um, is a solid uh, elite choice. Um, take a look at his strengths, he does a life leech ability, so if you're not familiar with that, um, any unit, enemy unit um, within 6 inches of the Doom on your shooting phase and your opponent takes a leadership test on 3d6 and uh, anything, and you compare the results, anything over is how many wounds that are suffered. Um, by the uh, enemy unit. No armor saves can be taken, however cover saves can be taken, so this definitely is huge and any wounds he gains from that or any wounds he causes in general, he gains in wounds, so he can be up to uh, 10 wounds pretty quick. So definitely combining him with the spore pod uh, is extremely effective and can cause a huge disruption uh, to your uh, opponent. He's also extremely um, cost effective for what he can do, uh, which was one of the things that makes him extremely overpowered. Uh, his weakness is honestly that he's tough, toughness for. Other than that, he doesn't have too much um, really making him a weak choice. He's a heavy hitter and causes a huge disruption to your opponent. Uh, honestly, if, in my opinion, he will not be around for the next uh, codex. He's pretty overpowered, and if he is there, um, expect a huge nerf to the Doom. But while he's around, though, uh, definitely had a lot of fun using him. I know uh, my opponents always hated playing against him, but he won't be around for much longer, I don't think. But. Definitely a solid elite choice in the 5th edition tier and codex. That wraps up the HQ and elite choices. I know there was a couple of elite choices I didn't cover, but that was due to uh, me having not played with them, and uh, being that I haven't played with them enough to make an informed opinion, I didn't want to give anything out there. So if you play with any of these models that I haven't covered, please feel free to comment, let users know um, what's going on with them. So thanks for taking the time to watch, I know it was a bit long of a video, but uh, next we have the Tyranid Troops and Fast Attack will be our next installment. So thanks, and subscribe.